landing, and particularly Feather did a great job of kind of pulling Hacker out of position and punishing mm. his over aggressiveness. And it feels like we're getting a similar game, but FBX have made an adaptation to the draft. It's going to be that Zaya last ban. I like the Zaya last ban. I also still like some of the big meta picks, but as well as the A Soul specifically, it's cares be taken it away. It does beg the question now what care wants to take into this Nico. I expect the mid lane to be one of these first two picks. The Vi is actually a big priority for FPX again. Now for Hacker, uh, trying to get yeah. that single CC lockdown and the catch out potential. I wonder if you have to lock your RE here. It's weird, right? Because Nocturne's passed through the ban list um, as opposed to that last game. Ephelios doesn't love playing into Nocturne because he's fairly immobile and despite him having a load of damage, you can't really do that when you're feared for how God knows how many seconds by the, uh, the Nocturne when he gets that tether down. But they are going to go for that same first rotation again, that Vi and the Ephelios. It's good in the early game. It's good around that level six mark, but with that Nocturne going through that ban list, I, I wonder if Leanne does go towards that because it is a great um, matchup into the Vi to be able to spell shield away from it. Uh, they're hovering it there through go. the ban list from that first game. It is going to get locked in. The combo is just so terrifying. The Pop Blossom plus the Paranoia and just the amount of damage that yeah. follows after that. I need FPX to find things that will either peel from this or just stop the onslaught. Because if they start getting kills, and now with this Jinx locked in even more so, they will just roll away. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually, particularly because of that combo of those ultimates. You need stuff which is safe enough to survive that combo or can stop that combo from happening. And a lot of the time, you stop that combo from happening by having an individual member so strong that you have to use both parts of that combo on a side lane away from the grouped up unit or something that can um, like push in and get so much vision that they can't set up that combo correctly. Something like the Ari and the Vi, it can help towards that end, but as we saw at FPX, they lacked a little bit of that kind of clinical precision to make the yeah. most of that in game one. They need to really solve that in game two because this combo of the Nico Nocturne is pretty linked despite the fact that we know Ari Vi is a good combo in itself. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is this combo for Vi and Ari is, is very strong in its own right, but it requires the timing and the execution, also hits, which like, is not one what we target. saw in game one. Like, Nico's going to hit your whole team, buddy. <laughs> but that's what they're opted into, all right? That's what they're going for here. Uh, we'll see in the second phase of bans if that focus comes to be a little bit more clear. We do have the Lulu ban by FPX and the Kennen by RA. Yeah. So that Kennen, uh, to me, when you see Kennen bans, partly it's because Kennen is a strong champion in its own right, but also Kennen is a pretty undiveable target in a side lane. He pops his ult, he gets something like a stopwatch early. You don't get any kind of advantage in those side lanes. Other champions like that have been stuff like Orn in the past. Cassante is a good example of that too. Gragas can be quite hard to dive. Those are probably champions which uh, Jalo, who needs to have a think about. Yeah. You can think about the Jax as well. And of course, that Gwen would have had the immune um, from the untargeted. <laughs> Gwen True. is immune uh, from that W. You can't I... even click the Nocturnal onto the Gwen if she presses that shield. It's so sad. Uh, I also, that's what I was going to say, is it definitely looks like they're just whittling down answers to make this combo not work. And it's uh, so far so good a good Shallow who would take away a couple of those big pieces. We did get the Rakan, though, locked in for Chocho. Something big for him, not alone, just giving him the tools, the mobility, and that peel ability. But it's something that FPX were desperately, desperately needing, and it's the Nautilus answer right away for Rare Adam. Uh, so, uh, the Jacks take away from Shallow who in that uh, first game. And now you have the problem of you need a good enough matchup into that Jax and you still need to be fairly undiveable. The Gragas half ticks those boxes because I don't think Gragas survives a, uh, a whole like die with a Nico roaming up and a Jax being in that side lane as well. You might just have to kind of bite that bullet though and just hope that Hacker and Care can get control of this mid jungle matchup and save you from just being like 300 gold on cooldown. Try not be a cask bot, but that is in the vein of what I kind of wanted. Some spacing tools, something that whenever they come at you with a full frontal attack, you can stop it, you can dissuade it to some well, extent. That's a really cool. Did you see the rare Adam pin on his jacket? That that was really cool. I like that. I did not. It was really oh, cool. I think you know I see what? it in next the background. Time, next time you see that, keep it. Up. Look at that. It's I see it in the background. Cool. That's so cool. Yeah. I like that. Anyway, one sorry, day, completely One day, that. the LPL English casters will get team merch. One day, one day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not chilling or anything, not chilling. Uh, <laughs> but we're getting into it now. We've seen a little bit of adaptation from FPX's draft priorities and how they wanted to approach this, but we've seen an all-in from RA. They got comfort, they got meta, and they had the execution in game number one. And 
They are one step away from claiming their first series victory of summer split. While it is early, that's still something you want in a single round robin that is so condensed as it is this split. We're getting in game two. Can the FPX Phoenix revive from the ashes of game number one? Or is chemistry against them today? We'll find out very, very shortly, Nightmare. Have I ever told you you have a love for the dramatic Mazel? Uh, Phoenix Crew in the Ashes do. very much I needs do. you in this second game. It was a tough one in that game one. Mistake around that Baron really sealed the deal. Game two will have their luck once again tested against Rare Atom. Hopefully the Jios give a nice ringing to the ear as we get into this one, especially as uh, fans waking up, you know, second series in the day. Should get a little bit louder from here on out as we do have a long day of games ahead of us. This is just our second. Maybe we have you know, maybe a nine game day ahead of us. We'll see if uh, the FBX can turn this first one around to make that so as the Jios come through. So we already talked about how uh, it does feel like this Nocturne Nico combo, if it gets rolling, is going to be very, very deadly. Whether that's onto the Aphelios or onto someone like this Gragas in a side lane, Rare Adam, they have options as to where. They point their crosshairs against FPX and uh, FPX on their own right. They, the way they stop that is by having good vision control and good pressure coming in from something like this mid jungle combination in itself. It has to start from there. Look at Cat, look yeah. at Hackett. They need to be stopping Rare Adam's combo before it comes to fruition. And I think actually in the early parts of game number one, they did have a lot of that scrappiness. They were contesting a lot of the objectives and again, a lot of trading for these neutral objectives from both sides. So I want to see a continuation of that and just keep on the front foot here for FPX because we've seen Ooh, what happens when they lose a little bit of sight of that. And speaking of being on the front foot, I don't know yeah. if that's necessarily the case right now as Leanne taking that front foot nice and well. I'd love to see what happened in that top lane wave state actually. I don't know whether Shallow who actually pulled the wave a little bit, who stood in that front Bush. Not sure whether he actually interfered with the minions on their way into lane, but uh, yeah, Leon gonna get himself a lot of camps stolen away from this top side. I would imagine, given the wards from FPX, they will have seen um, Xiaoxu getting back to lane, and of course, he wouldn't have been uh, walking straight into lane uh, from, from kind of top side river anyway. So, hopefully, FPX have themselves enough information to have themselves a counter because having this Gragas on weak side against this whole combo, which is pretty good at diving that Gragas, even though he's a uh, Pretty good okay champion most of the time in those situations. It's a little yeah. bit worrying. I'm now looking at Hacker's path and I think he does realize what's going on, but Loyen has nicely timed the back and is resetting right now as well. Sneak into the bush here, mid lane. Could be under threat if Strive steps up. But this is also buying a lot of time for Loyen to be in a defensive posture against Hacker, trying to get who has only gotten one clear of one side of his jungle, but maybe a kill can help him. Trying to hit that ball breaker. The flash will go through. The charm does not connect. Close run stuff. Not actually sure they would have had the damage to kill given the vault breaker miss. But plans. Hacker knows he has no jungle. He's like, where do I go? I don't know what to do. <laughs> He's <laughs> trying to figure out where to go as the 2v2 at bottom side pans out just a lot like we had last game. A lot of tussling between the two. Uh, it's a little awkward now as well because uh, Shiloh, who of course stuck under his own turret for now, Jax gets himself his own reset. If uh, Hacker stays overly long in this top well, side, gonna fight that this. Th there's a chance that Xiaoxu can get to this play quickly as well, because he's on his way back from base anyway. N with that information, oh Hacker, goodness. he can't get himself that blue buff. He just has to watch more camps go the way of Lian. Level oh. six for this Nocturne is going to be vastly faster than the Vise. All right, go back to the mid well, try to find something. He doesn't have flash, but he has a double root and you got to run away now. <laughs> Oh, this is such a feels bad, man. Early game for Hacker. He just hasn't been able to get anything. The lockdown is going to need to be there because at this point, that's all you're going to have. Yeah, uh, and what was the win condition we talked about from FBX? Oh, really strong stuff. Hey, uh, the yeah, yeah, hey, look at the bird out there. There's a, there's a bird. Oh, really? There's a bird. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. I can, I've miraculously forgotten there's about a the combo on this other side. This might help, though. Oh, this is a big catch out. And this is where you just need to stay proactive. As FPX late cleanse, at least trying to get the ignite off there of Assume. We'll burn both of those summoner spells while Shaoshu is taking a 1v1 against Shallow Who. And it's that proactivity that still needs to stay there for Hacker. Yeah, it, it does. But I mean, at least at this point, you think, well, it's not like Hacker's got much farm to be kind of doing right now anyway. It's kind of the last <laughs> of the remaining options, but manages to at least get away those summoners from Assume. Um, 
problem is, though, I don't know how you punish that quite as easily as, say, anyone without summoners on the side of FPX as soon as the level 6 comes up from Leon, who does have himself level 5 already. Going to have to be tracking that XP bar. Very, very dangerous as soon as the ability to turn the lights out comes out from the Nocturne. Leon's already positioning down this bottom side. There's a lot of vision around from FPX, though, to try to see if RA want to go ahead and get early objectives. We won't get the early dragon start here while Hacker's just trying to scoop up as much farm as he can. We did get that reset out from Lien. We will have a pickaxe coming back out, but still the Nocturne wants to get something. Maybe uh, tries to path up towards this dragon that they're actually posturing around so heavily. Uh, well, Hacker's on his top side of the map. If they have uh, good information on that, if they've read that well, potentially gives them the ability to start up something like that dragon pre-6 nocturne not Ooh. the best at fighting either way still if you're diving into the nocturne it's not like he uh, needs to close the distance himself with something like that ultimate so chances for them to uh, potentially contest that i think they're just going to power farm up towards that six on that nocturne either way though got a couple of camps towards that top side getting ever closer towards that point levels hicks uh hit from strive as well and then miko saw what he could do with that ability in that first game. So the combo, it's getting, it's looming on the horizon. Lizelle, Rare Adam are just about ready to go. I actually see Lian with that control word, care. You did see him, right? You 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 saw him, right? Uh, Spear Rush gonna have to be used by care. I guess he didn't see him. Uh, yeah, I guess not. Maybe just- Oh, that but Lian really didn't well. see uh... them either. <laughs> I guess it's just a trade back and forth. They get double flashes from both junglers. But Loyette actually is the one that wants to go back into this fight because they have the roam from bottom and from mid. Yeah, clutch flash from uh, from Lian to escape the flash cube coming in from Hacker. And Hacker, proactive may he be, not really landed those punches in this bot side. Good damage coming from the 2v2. You got Care waiting in the wings here. Assume getting some decent pokes on LWX. I mean, a little bit lackluster in the mana department for a little bit longer. <laughs> Got Strive playing mind games against Hacker, but heavy presence again from RA on this bottom side of the map, and they're going to start up the Dragon now. Yeah, you have level 6 from Nocturne now. There's some wards around this river. FPX needs to be very careful not to walk over enemy vision if that Nocturne flies in, particularly when you don't have level 6 from the Vi right now and you don't have the big ultimate. This is an overextension. They can pull the trigger on this oh, as soon as the Dragon's down. yeah. That trigger's already pulled, my friend, and LWX is going to burn that flash preemptively. Dredge Light's not going to connect. Nobody uh, gets him. What? Uh, the uh, shot goes wide. Is that guys? a Stormtrooper? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a weapons malfunction. <clears throat> yeah, we're all okay here. Awkwardly Everybody's walks away. fine. Look, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to need a replay to figure out exactly what happened after the first flash came through. It was a flash <laughs> over the knockup, then a hook, I think, trying to predict the first E out from the Rakan, and it just looks like a hook into the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so, um, what do we go through here? Oh, is this the uh, first play around the... Okay, right, right. So this is going to be the first play in here where we were wondering whether Kaer saw yeah, so you Leanne just didn't in see that... I didn't see it on the minimap, although to be honest, I wasn't exactly looking at the minimap at that point either. But going back into the replay down in the spot side now, <laughs> what the heck can you say? So further, flash is over. No! I don't really know what else to say about that. That's oh. just an MC. Yep, that's uh, that's a swing and a miss, Mizel. <laughs> that, yep, you know, hey, at least. Yep, set, set, cut the feed, cut the cameras off. <laughs> <laughs> I love. That Jojo is so calm, he literally immediately stop animation, throw up the <laughs> emote. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Let's go. We got the Rift Herald started up by FPX here, but a 1v1 under tow in favor of Shaoshu right now. It is. But every time you take trades like that, you do need to start getting a bit worried about where Lian has passed himself. You can see there's some vision being encroached into the enemy jungle in this top side from FPX, but now FPX needs to really really on point about how they can test this fight from her boss. Yeah, hook misses, this though. is a bad fight from RA. They they were on a board and everybody came. They FPX did not shy away from that whatsoever. They still have a very healthy tower and Asuma was still clearing waves on the bottom side. So RA caught out by a little bit and Feather goes down. Yeah, awkward setup from Raratum. Strive wasn't there, couldn't use that pop plus, and you hadn't crashed that wave into bot turret either to get Assume past the turret and ready to DPS, and then Feather just, you know, misses the hook, doesn't help either. Rare Adam with what felt like a big power play available with the first big paranoia of the game. Can't make that work around the bot side. Gonna be a key factor to keep in mind though, because it will 
come knocking time and time again <laughs> with this composition. We are getting our first items getting very close to coming online and for assume it did come online he's got a kraken slayer already here at 945. Uh, well he's such so weird to be looking at this item now realizing it's not a it mythic is. item it and really i'm like oh is. yeah that's cheaper than it was this it's isn't doing quite the same thing now. it's still it's still a really good item particularly for jinx who is of course getting up towards uh, higher and higher levels of range beyond that point still not quite sure about all the ad carry itemizations yet again i haven't had much times to play on it so I was uh, on my own little holiday, but uh, these AD carries, they have really been trying to figure out the most of it. Lots of attacks be coming through from that one. Top side, um, of course, big changes to itemization for Jax as well, particularly. Used to be a big Divine Sunderer builder. Now we are seeing a lot more Triforce come through at the same point. Bot side, though, holding to that thought. Chocho potentially looking for something. Has a Hex Flash. Has, his Has Hacker well. around the side, too. Hacker's uh, waiting over the wall. He will go through. They're going to pull the trigger here. Assume was on a ward there. They're going to re-engage with Feather. Docho gets out of that one. That'll be the flash from Assume. Definitely revisited by Hacker and FPX. Uh, Stug, getting something for that Hex Flash. I, I'm i not used to seeing the Hex Flash on the record either. Uh, sometimes you see a couple of different um, kind of runes taken alongside that kind of uh, tree at that point. But still, FPX, it's 11 minutes in. They had a pretty awkward start against this Nocturne, and they haven't been altered just yet. The Overforce hit. Be careful with this. Leon, you can fly back in. They're TPing. They're bringing Kara in here as well. They're going to TP Strive too. The fight's going to start off with Feather going down. They do get one back, and guess who gets excited? It's Assume. Strive stepping forward, but can't hit the chain root there, as well as another TP coming in for FBX. There's a Pop Blossom on Chocho, but they're going to leave Strive for death here. Care with the Spirit Rush, though. Might be able to connect something. The Ooh. cast comes out as Shala, who showed up in the nick of time, and Hacker gets a kill for FPX. It's 4-1 to one now, baby. Both of these teams know that it is all about that Nocturne ult. So FPX say, well, if you've got that long-range semi-global ultimate, if we bring people there and start the fight ourselves, knowing that we can have numbers, it won't matter at the end of it. You see the problems that LWX is going to have dealing with that Nocturne later into that game. Didn't really get to play out that fight. The Nocturne just solos them out very early into that fight. But Rare Atom are the ones to overstay, and it does mean that FPX managed to pick up some gold. That's a problem for future LWX. Uh, we'll look at President <laughs> right now. As well, Feather... well, if we go, if we go through like the ghost of like uh, LWX past <laughs> at this point, because we're going into the replay, um, this is what you're going to have to see an awful lot in this game. I'm so sorry to all the Phalaos players out there um, for the, the community learning that Noctis is actually Are you pretty sorry? good against your champion. Uh, a little bit. I actually quite enjoy it. I, I, I quite enjoy, enjoy champion. I, I particularly enjoy playing FLX and ARAM because no one can flank me and do stuff like this. <laughs> because <laughs> as soon as, like, most of the time when someone is in melee range of FLX, most of the time you're like, haha, I have my chat rooms running. This is awesome. Just not Nocturne because he fears you for such a long time. You just don't get to survive that amount of burst damage. Yeah. Um, so FPX, they're going to have to be very on point with their casks and the peel plate to keep LWX fighting later into the game. Indeed they will. We actually saw RA during that take a second dragon so they're starting to stack up those neutral objectives but uh we did want to see where that rift herald was going to go i guess it was used during that replay as well so it should be down should be getting at least a little bit of gold potentially it looks like we have those first items now as well for fpx where lwx has the storm razor we also have that black cleaver and the everfrost for shallow who and hacker that we do so um first item spikes coming up across the board as you're saying that stride breaker from that Nocturne does add in a large amount of chase down potential, good amount of bulkiness as well. Um, Nocturne ever playing that kind of role between Bruiser and Assassin does a bit of both. With the amount of gold he's got right now, definitely feeling like a bit of an Assassin in Shallow Who. So be careful about how he plays around his turret, trying to thin out that wave as it approaches his turret. Not really at the point now where you're going to have like these um, uninterrupted dives kind of onto that Gragas in the side lane. Shallow Who's got himself enough gold. One of the things that we were worried about was that hang on. Later into the game, isn't Nocturne just going to kind of throw himself <laughs> at the Gragas? Um, but I think actually just holding that threat over LWX, meaning that he can't push up in mid lane for free, probably yeah. more valuable at this point in the game. And we actually see RA posturing a little bit more vision around this top side of the map with another Rift Herald coming up. You could see them kind of transition over here to try and contest FPX. I will also say it's a double Everfrost composition for FPX. They might be a fiery Phoenix, <laughs> but they're going cool as a cucumber today. 
does feel kind of awkward doing it into a lot of Merc Treads, though. You can see it being built up by uh, the Jax and the Nautilus, because Everfrost, yeah. it's only, what, 1.5 seconds of CC. It gets kind of dropped down even lower than that. It's one of the reasons where I'm like, look, I'm not saying I hate the item all the time, but particularly when it's into a lot of Merc Treads, it does lose a bit more value again. How much value Ooh, can you get out of Paranoia this, comes out. They actually might be able to find the TP. They don't see it because they're paranoid. Now they're going to get the delayed engage and Xiaoshu on the flank. Oh. What the big pop blossom from Strive 2. The combo's just too neat, but LWX fires right back with that Inferno Moonlight Vigil. And now he's got the chakras, but he gets stopped by the Flame Chompers. It's an ADC tussle, and it's back and forth. The Zoom stepping up. Mega Death Rocket goes wide, and it is so close, but a three for two in favor of RA. And the big factor in that one is that LWX actually gets to do damage. Now, FPX still lose the fight, they still lose three people, but that's a dangerous sign for Rare Atom that they can't land the killer blow on Theophilus before things get a little bit spicy in these team fights. Everfrost does actually buy a little bit of space at the start of that fight, a little bit of time, and you can see that if Leon goes in alone on this Nocturne, can't really get the huge amount of damage that you're looking for. LWX as we said, actually manages to get a fight through this one as well. If you survive that initial engage, the damage is pretty significant, even with just the early game items built up. The Counter-Strike Pop Blossom combo from the Shadows is terrifying, maybe even more terrifying than the Paranoia itself. <laughs> when you combo it all together, it's a recipe for disaster for FPX. RA taking this front-footed approach and going for this Rift Herald. Yeah. Um see really later into the game if they can replicate that again though fbx uh last game they were the ones kind of wanting to split up take skirmishes it feels like this game they don't really have that option at all both these teams looking for um kind of grouped up fights i suppose or rather like fbx are looking for the grouped up fights uh, that uh rare atom um hopefully will over engage into them at that point harold summoned in this top side getting more gold over to shallow who who uh sorry over to shaoju rather man what do you have, like, the Shao at the start of it first? <laughs> my first thought is Shao Hu, then there's Shao Hu on one side, then Shao Zhu, and I'm like, okay, he's getting the gold. The Jax is getting the gold in this one, and at least gets that inner tower gold from that Herald. I still think in my two and a half, almost three years of casting LPL now, my favorite yeah. single matchup I got was Hung versus Hung. Uh, <laughs> especially because one's support and one's jungle, so it just causes absolute chaos. We did have, but, uh, um, we did have with Top Esports, we had Ching Tian and Tian, and then they faced Ching as well in Spring yep. as well. So that was a bit <laughs> of a tongue twister. <laughs> as uh, yeah, a little, little bit, a little bit difficult. Hey, we're warming you back up into the LPL summer split. All right, as uh, RA <laughs> warming up into this second game as well. So our FPX, we've seen now consistently contest and fighting and the skirmishing that we kind of expected in the second game. And now Hacker was looking to bait RA in, but Xiaoshu was right around the corner with the flank. Yeah, but we've seen Hacker go for those before. We talked about his over-aggressive past from previous teams. <laughs> it's just a little minion. It's, it's, it's a minion. A, a, a he's, evolved past, <laughs> he's, he's evolved past his own minion constraints of mind. It's, he's found freedom as a minion. He's found right. free will. <laughs> Minion meta, who's better, the caster or the melee? <laughs> you tell me, at me on Twitter, <laughs> which one's better. Oh my god, this is what happens if you let an AI take over a minion, by the way. <laughs> it's like chat GPT, but for League of Legends minions. Strive comes in, finds himself the, the Skynet of Summoner's Rift, and uh, well, oh, no. forces way past through Not that Skynet. <laughs> Oh man, just gonna can't talk back like to the that, alright? We're, we're, we're a remote broadcast, <laughs> alright? You can't, can't do this to me. Uh, we do get just... that Hextech Proto Belt though, uh, a Rocket Belt <laughs> to Strive there too. So at least we're starting to see some uh, big tools for RA, but as well as yes. FBX here and the level 11s as well. Yeah, but you can see again, like it's very dangerous uh, cast. Speaking of dangerous, uh, we got a double lockdown chain here on the Xiaoshu who even with the Grandmaster's might, Probably not going to make it out of here alive. Going to get a counter strike out there. Ooh, Shao Shao, who actually gets a nice little combo. Does get the leap strike out, but one more follow up. Vault Breaker charged up, ready to go. No, the flash comes out. The counter strike. And Shao Shu! Come at me, bro! That was some excellent use of cooldowns and also getting the max value out of that Sundra heal. As much as the item might have lost a little bit of power compared to its uh, kind of contemporaries and Triforce or the like. Sundra gives you some survivability and that clutch healing coming through. Shaoshu gets out alive and it's a couple of resources.
that FPX didn't really want to use on that play, held on to a little bit too long, and they don't manage to see it, see it out. Now Lian gets to have a crack at bot side. Okay, they got the paranoia pop. Xiao Xu was like, let's go. I want to fight you now with my jungler. Let's see what happens. The Mega Death Rocket across the table, and Xiao Xu gets the kill third of the game for this Jax, who will be so impossible to respond to for FPX in the side lane. Oh, that is just a bit of a heartbreaker for FPX. Um, it does feel like, again, you get around this mid-game, game one, and now in game two, a couple of these over-aggressive, not well-coordinated plays puts them into a very difficult position. We're now at the point where, once again, you make another mistake like this, and that's Baron down after that point. You give up a Baron with the threat of this Nocturne flying out of the shadows of you losing your mini wave pushes, losing vision. This gets much more regular Ooh. and much more difficult to deal with. Xiaoxu plays this out very, very well. But the follow-on from this point with the Nocturne is always going to be a threat. And FPX, they swing and a miss at this one. And they're in a very difficult position now. They spent so much time trying to chase that down that it ended up leaving an opening for Ari to punish them there, but as well as had already gotten some vision towards the top side of the map. Yep. Now you see Ari redeploying up this way with a small gold oh. lead, but sure clearing up this top side so they can get prepped up for yet another dragon contest in about two minutes and 10 seconds. Mazel, do you like plays? Do you like musicals? Plays? Yes. Plays. Stage plays. Well, yeah, um, it's in Sumetso right now. We've got ourselves a little bit of a break. Get yourself like those tiny ice cream tubs you can get from like the foyer. Get some of them. Get okay, yourself a reception. Okay. Maybe go to the bathroom. Whatever you need to do. Because Act 2 is about to begin. Mazel. It's 21 minutes. <laughs> Baron has spawned. Yeah, you're gonna breather. He does claim Dominion over the top side of the river for uh, the victor of the next fight to take as they see fit. And uh, I don't know whether this is going to be a comedy or a tragedy. Uh, or a bit of both. Sometimes it ends up that way when we get ourselves into some flipping competitions. But both of these teams cannot afford to miss a step beyond this point. We saw it in game one. We've seen it pretty much the entire summer split so far. The few series we have seen of it. But this is going to be a very different guess pace what? of game now. You can't... You, what, guess what? 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 What, what, what am I going to guess? 20 minutes in! And we have it hovering is. over the Baron. <laughs> 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 FPX, I, they're like chopping at me. Like, hmm? Do we, do we go for it? Do we want to fight? <laughs> I, the, the big purple orbs right there, guys. Uh, they look like there we go. Bella that wants to fight as we're going in. Strive on the back with three man pop blossom and Shao Shu's coming in as well. FBX, man, you just gotta find an in, but there is a stone cold wall in front of you from Rare Adam. Out damn spot, out damn you. King Duncan's dead. And the Scottish players here live in the LPL. It's a bit of a tragedy for FPX again around the 20 plus minute mark. They don't have a smite to deal with. They might have to try and go for again, a very desperate contest. This is a little bit desperate. They don't have many ways in here, but a little bit of damage and it will be secured in the end by Lien. They get five Baron buffs. Shallow who tried to pick somebody off in the end. Everybody's uh, gonna buddy? stay. They buddy? should be able to turn this back on them. Do you have that? Powered it back. You got the TP coming out onto the map and RA safe and stable with a big gold lead now. Yeah, we couldn't have wrote a, written a better script. That one is to the T, what we have come to expect beyond this point. Rare Atom, they have shown that they have better execution when that objective spawns. They have themselves the Baron now. What are they going to do with it? Dragon has spawned. They get themselves the reset. They have themselves the paranoia to bring to this and most of their bigger ultimates. If they can stall this for a little bit, might even have themselves another Pop Blossom to bring to the fight. FPX just trying to pull the trigger on something at this point. Xiaoxu's in the back of the pit. Feather has been so key. Here we go. And guess who he gets onto? It's LWX. He's going golden, but Pop Blossom doesn't actually connect on a multiple member, but that root does! And it's immediate evisceration for the rest of FPX! A double kill for Asum! And Care's gonna not last very much longer. He does burn that flash, so he makes it out alive, but that'll be a third dragon for RA. And they are just becoming clinical and picking apart FPX. Yeah, I've uh, changed my mind. It's not Macbeth. It's going to be Titus Andronicus, I think, this play. For those of you that don't know, I think it had like 5.1 atrocities committed per act. We're seeing that in every team fight right now because LWX is not able to stand and fight. We saw that one glimpse of what the FLS could do earlier in the game, but Rare Atom get them get themselves to that sole point. They pick up themselves even more gold beyond this point, but we're going to go right back to God. where Act 2 started. It was all about this mid lane push. The big ultimates come in, and that's a great angle chosen by Strive, actually. You don't get to kind of very uh, cleanly disengage from that ultimate. You'd have to commit so many flashes and dashes over that wall. They don't manage to get out in time, and then it's just 
Capitulation once again. It feels like as soon as that first fight goes down the hole from FPX, they lose the pace of the game a little bit. They lose themselves in the desperation, and this goes from bad to worse. Feather gets the setup, and the volleyball spike comes through <laughs> from the rest of Strive and RA. The fact that it wasn't even the pop blossom, but just the double fruit, it's just nuts to me, but it's now FPX on the front foot. The Moonlight Vigil comes through, but doesn't really connect there. They got so much CC to lock down Assume, though, and that is what this composition does. Okay, so a bit of a slap back from FPX, importantly so. Assume caught out of position, no flash, no gale force for that play. Gets to uh, at least take some gold back off of that huge Baron play, which came through Chocho. Now looking maybe for something over that side with the Hex Flash, calls off that play. Still has pocket of vision to work with. Of course, no AD carry yet on the table for a rare item. Can they make something of this? No, oh, a little bit of flash play going on here for Tio Tio. Gonna catch out Lu Yen, but won't find it now. Xiao Xu is looking for his own flank on the other side. You immediately see FPX is scared. Actually gonna try to go in on Xiao Xu. Here's the big shot. Three members and immediately two are gone. FPX has not been reborn. They've tur been turned into a cremation idol and it's smashed into the ground. It is RA that has streamed forward. This has been at least now two, uh, one and a half weeks coming for RA. They've been so close to finishing out series. They've been so close to fighting their first series win in summer, and it looks like they're right on the precipice of it. I didn't know you could make popcorn chicken out of a phoenix, but Rare Adam approving is wrong, teaching us something new today, and they're teaching us how they play around the crucial moments beyond the 20 minute mark, taking two inhibitors. It's not gonna be the end of the game or the series just yet, but you feel it's about as good as done. It's a hell of a lot of gold for them. It's sold point for them. They get to reset. Nothing's getting taken off of the back of this play from FBX, and they've been left absolutely flailing as soon as they make the first mistake in these games. 26 and a half minutes in. Base is busted open. Bot lane still there as a defensive structure for FPX. We're going to take a look back at this replay. So, um, let's go back. <laughs> I love these Minion absolute mode. Titors. And you just, this is what happens. Skynet's here. Come with me if you want to live. Well, maybe not to FBX, but uh, the Terminator in himself, Stride, really making the most of this pick. You can absolutely see this extra skill set of the mind games you can play from this Nico being used to full extent by the LPL mid laners. The thing is, you don't expect, you're eyeing up a five, five on five. You're like, all right, I've got my man marks. I know where everybody is. Okay, we got this going. Then everybody starts using abilities about and this little tiny minion just walks up. And you're like, I wasn't expecting there to just be this little <laughs> tiny thing in the middle of this giant animation. And uh, it comes it comes to your doorstep. Not very nicely so, as we do have these yeah, this three is what items when you let a now. minion When you miss enough last hits on minions, you give them to one minion, this is what you get. <laughs> Like, I'm actually, still waiting for the uh, melee versus caster conversation. Yes. Up here. <laughs> I think I'm trying to remember who wins in a 1v1. Is it a cannon meta? Caster. Well, I think cannon is always in meta at that point. I think it was a bit OP. Maybe I have to oh, that one out. We That's got a the there. They do find a nice little pick in the wombo combo. Again, comes alive for FPX. They are down, but they are not out. And that's been consistently the case in this series. They will not stop fighting. Okay, so some ink left on the paper still. FBX find themselves a clutch uh, kind of saving play at that point. Shaoshu, not going to take any large fights from the beyond that point. Has himself three items, but he wasn't in that fight. And you can see how quick the FPX engage can come in with the likes of that cast. It's a little bit longer engage uh, in terms of its time span from Rare Atom. And now with that Baron spawning up in the next 10 seconds and no paranoia off cooldown, now might be some danger moments for Rare Atom. This could be a Baron start from FPX. Keeping up this momentum, they can at least buy a lot of time here if they get this Baron. Gonna bring Care from behind. No Stripe jungler has for Stripe RA. Has the flash. That is really big, and Xiaoshu going in now as well. Trying to find the big pop blossom on all five members! And it's a 2v5 that RA take all day! Will FPX do get the Baron buff? And LWX picks off Xiaoshu. It's a TP now coming through, but he does have the empowered back. They're looking for Shalau who here. Feather has made it, but there's two of him, and he's on the backside. The TP's not fast enough, and Luyen shuts him down. RA will look to push up the gut and end FPX's game. It was a tragedy all along for FPX. This one's gonna end right here. Rare Atom finding their first series victory. Just gotta find the minions to shuttle into that Nexus.
Got 10 seconds on Hacker. They are hesitant. They do have the really? Baron buff, no. even though. But the Inferno is just too much to handle here. And maybe the four and a half item spike for LWX. They'd rather <laughs> close this game out cleanly with the Dragon Soul. I was so sure that time with the top wave, they could have uh, looked for something. Maybe with the Moonlight Vigil coming up, maybe before they could take down the Nexus, they were a little bit worried, especially with that many items onto LWX, who is quietly, maybe slightly louder after a couple of plays like this, found himself at eight kills, despite himself being in a difficult composition to survive. This was a really dangerous Baron, even with the numbers advantage. We have seen so much work being done by Strive on this Nico. It's been the first pick from both games, and he's really made the most of it. Shoshu, oh. not quite able to uh, close that LWX, and with Spear of Shoujin, we get a lot of extra cooldown reduction, a lot of extra ability haste. It's slightly less on not on immobilizing abilities, though, so he couldn't get himself another Counter-Strike to keep <laughs> himself alive. Sees I'm himself down at that point. Luckily, there's a cleanup which comes out from the rest of our Atom to at least stop the Baron buff having huge value from FPX. For like 0.2 seconds, Shallow, who's like, wait, Nautilus was behind me. <laughs> like that, that's at least my reaction there. He got the double Nautilus there. <laughs> and it was the close it from RA, right? Like not letting FPX get away with a lot of this stuff. And even though FPX are fighting now within almost 2.5K gold, it's a huge comeback for them. And it's starting to beg the question of how, how does this team composition as five on five pressure RA now if, if Lian can't get in? Good question, because of course, a lot of those fights, we've not really seen Xiao Xu present in the 5v5. We've seen him in a couple of isolated plays beyond that point. See a teleport back towards that boss. Can they just cancel that? Not quite. Okay, so Xiao Xu able to at least respond towards that bot side would have been very dangerous to give themselves another open in here. They would have only had their Nexus turrets to stand behind beyond that point. Of course, Ocean Soul taken um, as well. It's going to be very hard to shut down Xiao Xu once he gets into these fights now. And right now, FBX are going to heavily rely on LWX. It is his moment now, <laughs> almost that full item build for this Aphelios. But it's a place that LWX has known before, time and time again, right? This is why they've kept this experienced bot laner for FPX for so long and building around him. And uh, you're hoping that FPX, at least if you're an FPX fan, can utilize this conversation well. Find picks with Hacker and Care and shut it down with LWX. This really is... Probably on LWX to find that extended DPS. Shallow, who's done a decent job of getting some burst onto Assume. Assume has had a pretty difficult series, actually, particularly in this game, too. First game was uh, an easier time of it on that Zyre into the late game. Even then, in the early game, had some uh, deficits to come back against, particularly when L LWX got himself a lot of that plate gold. But still, FPX, they're not that far behind in gold, actually, after this Baron's been taken. Where they are happy to chill, not give themselves openings for that paranoia to potentially catch them out. And it's such a lull state right now where you're just having FPX finishing items, right? They just finished three total items. LWX got the Bloodthirster last item, and then we just saw Hacker and Chala who complete theirs as well. well as uh, there is some fight left in this Phoenix, although a death stance does come through for Xiao Shu. We will not have any objectives for teams to really fight around, and yeah. that's where RA want to pick them apart. But uh, a lot of this comes from actually a point which you just made about, well, actually, how does the 5v5 go if Leon can't quite get into the fight? Well, if FPX yeah. then say, you have to go into five people, he doesn't really feel that great pulling the trigger. Leon is not going to walk forwards, doesn't have himself something like a GA, has himself a couple of tank items to keep himself as healthy as possible. But again, I don't think... Leon's going to be particularly happy on the engage. You can see that's why Rare Atom very tentative about the way that they're approaching what potentially could be a game-ending play. Yeah, but if they find that big engage, if they get the little Strive minion in the middle of five members again, uh, I think it's going to go one way or the other. I think RA themselves have been playing off this the last couple fights. They get big flanks from Shaoshu. They are setting up the fights very well. But again, like you're saying, if they just get... You now the question dropped on their doorstep of, hey, can you fight a 5v5 straight up? The answer is going to be a little bit more questionable. <laughs> and FPX are just buying a lot of time here. Yeah, and uh, what that means is that it's probably best case scenario for them in this late game where they can force one big fight where they have double GAs up. They'll have themselves a stopwatch on care as well. They have a lot of kind of... Um, disposable utility, one-time only stuff, which they can use for what potentially could end the game 
and bring themselves to a game three in this series. If it happens around that elder, it'll happen in the next one minute and a half. Baron gonna be yeah. on the table as well. Of course, that's been a big actor on its own in the second game. And we just saw LWX trade out for a, uh, a Lord Doms as well. And we're still waiting on a final item for Assume. So some power differential coming through here into the next fight where we have Baron spawning in about five seconds, but more importantly, an Elder Dragon in a minute and 10. So, um, Shashu in the spot side, Shalu who has that teleport, but can't really wave clear and still be in a teleport safe distance away from a Counter-Strike. So Rare Atom, they have themselves the advantage on at least starting an objective at this point. They're going That's in. Big They're going to get the catch out here. The Everfrost plus the Moonlight Vigil, but Luyen, he's trying to find LWX. He's just too tanky. Luyen didn't have that way in. Everybody's going in one at a time for RA. They're trying to find the backlight access from Hacker. And now Assume stepping up. Shaoshu has been so big here, and Assume survives on the side. It's a one catch. No, he's dead. The big pop off Gale Force from LWX. And Luyen still has no way into this fight. F PX take a big one. That is absolutely huge. The Ocean Soul makes the initial engage a little scuffed from FPX. Assume survives longer than I think they expected him to, but LWX gets to fight. He said that was the key difference between the winning and lost flights from FPX in this game. Now FPX is going to get themselves onto that Baron. Elder is spawning right now, though. It's the potential of a. Uh, Paranoia is available. Point. He's going to pop it. They got the Spirit Rush already used by Care. Shaoshu's trying to find a big Counter-Strike. Lian buying a lot of time. Counter-Strike not going to connect on anybody. Big engage from Feather, but look at the combo coming out from FPX. You don't have the damage just yet, but now FPX are falling off, and the GA is going to be popped from LWX. This is a scrappy one, but a Pop Blossom makes the difference again! And Strive flexes all over FPX! Rare Adam just won this series without an AD carry in the final fight, styling eventually on FPX. It just takes one. That little minion is your undoing every time. And it wasn't even a minion that time. It's just a pop blossom in the middle of your team. The amount of multi-man combos that RA have landed. It got a little bit sketchy. It got a little bit sweaty. But RA will claim their first series win of the summer split in the LPL. And what a way to do it over at PX. Took them maybe longer than they would have hoped in that second game. Did feel like after that first Baron went down in that second game, we were going to see a rerun of uh, what happened in that game one. But still, a win is a win. First on the board for Rare Atom. In spring, they started off on a, a bit of an undefeated streak at the very start. I think they went up, uh, went up to about 4-0 before they lost themselves that first series, but then couldn't really keep themselves that same run of form. Didn't find themselves into that playoffs. It's a bit early to be talking about anything about that, but where Adam <laughs> finding themselves a win does at least start to settle some of those nerves, get themselves into this new split. Of course, their first split without that veteran top laner cube for the organization. But seeing how they play around these mid games, there's a lot to work on here, um, build on rather here from Rare Adam. There was some good stuff around those barons.